Good day fellow investors, it's Friday and it's time to answer your comments. One of the comments when I asked for feedback, which we will discuss a little bit later in the video, was to talk more about my mistakes, investing mistakes. Fortunately there haven't been many, but there have been some mistakes and I want to discuss this today and later I'll discuss your excellent amazing feedback about how to improve the channel and there are definitely things that I will do. Let's start with my mistakes and then on your feedback. I'll also be discussing another comment but I'll make a special video about that about chasing yields, high yields, so look at the video just after this one. Adrian Yu says congrats on passing 16,000 subscribers, thank everybody, thank you everybody here for creating that and being here with me, so I thank you all. And Adrian says that I can improve my channel by explaining deeper into, your, into my past successes and failures and how you make those decisions. I will discuss the successes in detail in special videos, but let's start with a failure and how I made those decisions. My failure, I was, I was still young and I invested in Garmin in 2008. So I invested somewhere around 90 after the stock has dropped from a peak of 130 and then I sold somewhere around 60. So I didn't take the whole way down, but significantly I did lose a significant part of the position. What was my strategy? I was using their products for fishing and I thought every new car will have a GPS system in it, which was correct, but it wasn't Garmin's. So the company was profitable, it was a good company, it remained a good company, constantly increasing dividends over the last 10 years, book value increased, great numbers here. However, what was my mistake? I overpaid, I paid price earnings ratio when I started of 25, which was not bad for such a growth company, huge promise, but the first mistake was definitely there, much more than the book value, I should have bought it down when it was trading close to book value still profitable but that's a different story so that was one mistake the second mistake was i thought that garmin was the leader was the dominant force there but there were so many other players coming that became much bigger much lower margins destroyed the industry destroyed margins and make it difficult to be profitable there so i learned my lesson always think about margins modes Will the company be able to really deliver on that growth whenever you see a high growth promise? I learned my lesson there. I'm very careful. If I do growth stocks now, it is okay. I can lose everything if it doesn't go. If it goes, then I make a lot of money. So that's my risk reward there. And I'm doing that on Chinese, some Chinese stocks now. However, it's really complicated to invest in such stocks and be aware of seeing someone dominating, I don't know, GoPro a few years ago, because when a company starts making money, everybody else flocks to that sector to take advantage of their pro profitability, because someone has to confirm, okay, this is a good sector, let's jump in. And with such growth stocks, sooner or later, a game changer is usually a recession. And many of you that are watching now have never seen a recession, because you were still in school when the last recession was there in 2009. So really embrace the next recession, take it as a learning experience, you will lose money, I, I know I will lose money in the next recession, I'm fine with that, but keep investing and when it's cheap, when everybody is pessimistic, when everybody is down, push hard on the investing pedal. So it's inevitable that we make mistakes, it's inevitable that we lose money. The key is to keep investing, especially when you lost a lot of money. So that's the message for my investing mistakes. Let's see, talk about your feedback and what should I improve in the channel. So what you like most comments were stock analysis, stock analysis, stock analysis, ETF lists, Canada, Canada, I will have to make a video especially or a series on Canadian stocks the stock exchange there because I have a lot of viewers from there. My portfolio, a lot of you asked me about my portfolio, that's closed for my research platform and by showing some stocks to buy in the past, I really, I don't want to bother with, okay, you said this, you said this, you said this and then something changes, I sell my position and I cannot make constantly videos about what I said in the past. I have therefore set up the research platform when we cover stocks, 
when we know the risk reward, when I adjust the models in relation to the earnings, every time there is news earnings call, we adjust, we give a report on that. And that's how you can cover stocks and really give recommendations about the stock. If I show a stock that I own now and something changes in six months, everybody will go back to that video and it's simply too risky and I feel a great responsibility because there are a lot of investors that naively invest after YouTube videos. You should always do your research, but for those who really want the research, there is always the research platform. I can't do better. And as for the stock analysis that I show here on YouTube, I think I'm very clear with the risk and the reward. So with that, I hope I help you in analyzing the risk reward there. What can go wrong? What can go right? You have to attach the probabilities and see whether it is a buy or not. That's for all of those who love the research part. And there will be plenty more because that's what you love the most. A lot of positives about economic videos. I'll focus on that on the Saturday stock market news, investing education. I have to talk more about other investments, talk about Seth Klarman, Peter Lynch, Pabrai, and all the other successful investors, even the less known. Of course, with books, we continue with Benjamin Graham, we'll continue later with the margin of safety. And there, there's something later that when I finish those books, I want to go to psychology, thinking fast and slow, which is extremely important for the mar market. Metrics, metrics, I'll be just the price earnings ratio, but metrics are tricky. Peter Lynch, I just read somewhere that he said that there is no empirical way to invest in stocks. It's always about, okay, metrics, we all know all the metrics, but it's about co applying common sense to the results of those metrics. So that's here, I don't know how. If I make a metric, there is no good EV EBTDI ratio, there is no good PE ratio, there is no good dividend yield. The higher the better, but it's always common sense sense on those metrics and ratio. There is no formula for investing, unfortunately, and Buffett will tell you that and everybody who is successful will tell you that. Going back on coverage, very difficult to do because it will be only about a few stocks and that's really not the point of this YouTube video. Where is the value today? I'll definitely talk about, I'm talking about Brazil now, talk about Ru Russia and all other value cheap sectors. We do that constantly. So I think your feedback was generally what I really do. I have to do Sven's score, which is a must do for me. So each stock, give it a score from an opinion perspective like Doug's has on his car. So I'll definitely do that and I'll try to really focus on your feedbacks. So I thank you very much for your feedback, for your support of on this channel. It has been an amazing adventure of over the past a year, 14 months. I'll continue to give more and more value as much as I can here in order to improve your everybody's financial life. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.